Oh, hey, Austin, how are you? Hey, friends and neighbors, I'm doing well. So we are here to do a scavenger hunt. Yeah, we're gonna do a little bit of scavenging, a little bit of hunting, and maybe see some cool stuff. Um, so we're out here in our uh, edible teaching garden, soon to be transformed into our victory garden. Uh, Jack's over there right now working on some of that stuff and we're, we're getting pumped for that. So uh, exciting things are happening, but out by the cabin right now, you know, there's some really interesting stuff that I feel like is a little bit of a secret. Maybe not everyone knows about it. And especially because it's kind of hidden in our beds, not everyone really gets the chance to, uh, to get super close to it. So we're going to get super close to some of those really interesting stuff today. And um, before we do that, I'm going to take a drink real quick here. An ode to our wine experience. Actually, not quite. I won't drink out of this. If anybody can see that, how does that look? Pretty tasty, I hope. Uh, uh, so, what are we looking at here? Tadpoles? So, we have some tadpoles, and these aren't frog tadpoles, they are toad tadpoles. And earlier, we did a video on some of the selections of wildlife that we have. And, you know, I said, oh, we'll probably have some tadpoles. I saw some frogs get together. And, um, sure enough, in our south formal garden in the fountain there, there are a ton of tadpoles. I mean, it is actually teeming with them. So hopefully, we'll have a really good population of toads up there in the south formal for everyone to see when we get back in the business. Um, we're going to go put those back in the, in the uh, fountain where they belong because toads, as more terrestrial creatures compared to frogs, they need more stagnant water. So. Be looking out in your neighborhoods right now. There are tadpoles everywhere. Um, some of the open spaces that you can go to. Uh, you know, be careful, practice your social distancing, but you can see a lot of that stuff. So let's look at a few other things. One of my favorite things about the cabin is the stained glass, of course. Um, it's absolutely beautiful on a sunny day or when it's lit up at night. Um, but something really cool that I noticed just the other day when I was in here looking at our strawberry patch here. And you can see, since it is spring, you can see some of the flowers, you can see some of the young strawberries that are still really green. Oh, that's amazing. Um, so I was in here the other day and I got to look in and at the footing of our cabin, they actually have some really cool figurines and glass pieces. Um, where Carl got these from was actually in Henrietta and the place is not open anymore. Um, but these were kind of scavenged. It's called uh, glass slag, so it's kind of the leftover stuff. But you see here a really nice seal, very delicate. This is probably like a quarter inch thick here on its flipper. Um, and so it, it makes me a little nervous, you know, someone might break it or something, but it's, it's super delicate. And if you keep looking throughout all of this, this maybe looks like a cat, actually, like the back of a cat. I can see a tail here, the two ears. Like a sleeping cat. Like yeah. a sleeping cat, yeah. So one of the reasons that we even have these is because the cabin was originally going to be flat on the ground, but we're in a little bit of a floodplain with the Crow Creek right here. Right. So yeah. we elevated these, and instead of just having boring pillars, uh, Carl Unish, the artist, actually created some more art for the for the uh, elevating elevating tools here. Yeah, and it's absolutely beautiful too. I mean, it's both functional and beautiful, and you know, very cool. You can do that. Why not? Right? Why not? sun or flower, however you want to look at it. Um, I like to think this harkens back to the sandstone path in the East Formal. There is either the flower or the sun um, there by the bull fountain um, in the East Formal Garden. So we'll link that in some of the upcoming scavenger hunt stuff that we're going to do. Another really interesting thing that I saw in here, if you look in this one, this looks like maybe a teacup or something, but it looks like something is stuffed inside of that. It looks like a cloth piece or maybe it was a handkerchief at one time or something, but there's some absolutely beautiful, delicate work in here. Um, some really cool shapes and everything. So uh, when we get back, we'll, we'll try to focus on this stuff and we'll, we'll look at it a little bit more. Great. Uh, Adutia is blooming right now. It's absolutely beautiful. We've got some geese there in the background. Those are just extras for our uh, for our scavenger hunt yeah, today. Exactly, extras. They uh, actually I called them in. I we hired the geese. Over. Yeah. Yeah. So, if last night everyone saw you know, a lot, a lot of rain, um, some pretty drastic hail, some of our plants got a little, a little flattened here. But interestingly enough, uh, 
some of the wildlife gets pushed downstream and so this one got a little off track here um, and we'll put him back in the stream or her um, later today but this is a snapping turtle not an alligator snapping turtle it doesn't have the uh, defined spines here on the back um, but this is just our regular snapping turtle and so there's a pretty big population of them in our Crow Creek area uh, they're beautiful creatures they smell a little bit just because they spend so much time in that swampy area um, but be looking for all that stuff out right now it is uh, wildlife is you know you can hear the birds chirping right now I saw an owl this morning uh, so you're gonna place this uh turtle back into the creek later yeah. today we'll, yeah. we'll we'll put him back in the creek today and uh, probably upstream just a little bit because it was trying to get back upstream uh, when we found it so yeah we'll do that here later good so if you want to follow me Jeff um, we're walking and talking so later today we're going to post uh, two documents um, that you can actually go out into your own neighborhood or your backyard and do your own little scavenger hunt they're both they're meant to be you know, fun, but a little bit educational, um, trying to mix that edutainment uh, situation up. So real quick, like if you look right here, uh, things are in bloom, right? Little butterflies everywhere. This right here is our white clover, and it smells, it is the best smell. It's like the, it's like the smell of green and the best type of light perfume that you can, you can think of. Cows love this stuff. Uh, anytime we would rotate pastures growing up, our cows would go in and immediately eat this fresh green clover. Um, so it's it's also, I mean, humans could eat it too. It's not necessarily something that you see on a dinner plate all the time, but it is an edible. Uh, I wouldn't highly recommend it, but it's 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 absolutely beautiful smell. So take take an option or take some time to go and smell that. Um, and then later, um, I think next week, we'll actually be talking about some flower crowns and flower bracelets that you can do at home. Now is the perfect time to be doing some of that stuff. So that'll be an activity where we can actually show people how to make these things at home? Yeah, we're going to have our assistant horticulturist, Ross. He's going to sit down, hopefully in a clover patch, and he'll weave some stuff together and he'll talk about some different things that you can do together. Um, it's, it's really cool. It's fascinating. Hopefully some people are already aware of it. But if let's, let's pan on over to uh, Jeff. I think this is your favorite spot. Yeah, this is a little bit of a, a triggering here because... <laughs> I was once stung by a bee over here, but it's very safe, and obviously we have a fence here, and I should have known better than the, to get a little the, bit too close. The bees sense fear, is what I've always been told. Who knows if that's true or not, but... They sensed mine, for yeah, sure, that day. so hopefully my comfort will be okay. So here by our apiary, we're really excited uh, for the bees. They're extremely busy right now, but we're really excited to be using um, the edible garden and the victory garden, how we're gonna expand that, and that's gonna be really, really good for pollination. Um, the European honeybees, they, you would not be able to eat your almonds or your strawberries if it wasn't for them. There are a whole bunch of other crops that are completely reliant on the domesticated bees, which is the European honeybee. Um, and so here at Philbrook, we're just kind of doing our own little part and keeping on that track of those many, many centuries of having those bees around. You know, do the bees live here year round or do they go away in the, in the winter? So, or? you know, like any rock star of the world our bees are you know they travel quite a bit yeah. and so uh, sometimes there'll be a few boxes that are left here and then uh, there'll be a swarm that comes out and then we have what we're called feral beehives so we had a swarm not too long ago up here in these trees um, and it's very loud when it happens and that's why i guess that's why it's called a swarm right because it's very loud <laughs> so um, they do travel uh, they go to california and they do work uh, they're in some of the, the almond fields and strawberries and all those common things that you just think of. And so, so, so they winter in California? Yeah. They, and then they, they kind of summer here with us? They winter in California and they <laughs> summer in Tulsa. It's great. Um, so we uh, here on our dirt paths right now. Uh, the water washed everything out. There's some really cool stuff that'll wash up along those creek sides. So maybe go find your local creek and look around to see what it may be washed up or what's a little different and new. Right now, what we're going to do is, you, know, you can show them, if you don't mind, show them the, the nice waterfall. So we're gonna hop down, kind of in this video. We'll hop down here in a little bit and we'll take a look at some other wildlife. I was really, really surprised and I thought maybe it got washed away. I was really nervous, but luckily it's still there. Um, 
this is just part of natural selection and everything, but there's a really cool bird's nest down here. So I'm gonna hop down here. Okay. Yeah, you take that. All right. So we're down here. So we're down here in the creek. Um, you can see quite a bit of debris and everything up here. The number one polluter of creeks is actually silt and stuff like that. Um, you don't really think about it, but it really does make all that cloudy stuff. So whenever you're you know, mucking up around your creek area, think about that as a potential pollutant. Um, real quick, let's look under here. I'm not sure what bird species it is, but it's an absolutely beautiful nest. And there's five eggs that are up under there. So to give you just a little behind the scenes here, Very cool. Yeah. How did you even find that? Oh, I was down here actually picking up trash out of the creek. Yeah. Uh, so we do try to make some effort to clean up what happens. You know, you know after rain, uh, you see a lot of trash come down through the creek, and so after the rain, we to come out in the creek and pick all that stuff up. So you can see a little bit of debris, but. Uh, Near as much as sometimes what we see. So be looking on some of the comments. We'll post the uh, what you can do in the backyard. It'll be three senses that you can focus on, and then it will also be uh, some stuff that you can go see in the neighborhood. So have fun with it. Uh, good talk, you guys. Thank, Thank you, Austin. Thank you. Bye bye.